What's up gamers? This is NTG here with another review. This time it is for the Untitled Goose Game. Well, to be fair, for me it's called the Untitled Geese Game when I played it because I did not play this as a solo experience. I played this as a multiplayer experience. Um, and let's get to who joined me. And I want you guys to welcome him and I want you to, you to introduce yourself and introduce your channel. Hey everyone, my name is Divine Cummings, voice acting, also known as Monaco97 here on YouTube, and I'm here to review the Untitled Geese game for the Nintendo Switch with Nintendo Gamer Gale here today. And we are happy to have him. So, like I said before, this is not an art, and when we were playing it, it's definitely called the Untitled Geese game, because when we played it, it, sh it like crossed off. I feel like it crossed off the goose and put geese. Um, so I like that that was a little feature for the added multiplayer because I don't think multiplayer was a thing in the very beginning, which is why it was Goose, but they did add it, which was super fun because that is how we experienced it. Um, I don't know that it has too much of a story, but we'll get into story, gameplay, and then we'll give it a rating for you guys. Um, and I'll take it away with the story. Uh, yeah, okay. So the story for this is pretty simple. So you start off the game with uh, two geese in this situation. And essentially, you'll go through this pond, and while you're going through this beginning section, it like kind of teaches you the controls of like how to grab, how to quack, how to you know swim, move, and run. Then once you're going through this pond section, you know the title screen comes up, and then you're kind of in this picnic slash farm in a sense area. It's kind of like amalgamation of both, but essentially the core of the story is you're gathering all the key items from these areas and bringing it back to your nest or at the start of the game so like you'll have you'll grab stuff from that's very valuable to the farm or you'll grab stuff very valuable to the picnic and all these different areas that you're traversing through the levels essentially the key items are what's most important to them as you're trying to grab it essentially you're taking it back home to your home base and that's essentially the story or the summary of the entitled geese game i thought they were just being fudging around and the 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 thing that they want at the end is not the items but the bell the other things was yeah. just to f around with the 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 the, the extra people so so this so this game is a very indie popular indie game right um let's get into gameplay right and the gameplay mechanics of it is like you're this goose that's just being mean or for in our case it's geese that are just being mean and and putting things in the water like they give you a list on paper of what to check off and so you're either throwing crap in the water in the very beginning uh grabbing the farmer's tools you're doing all this mean crap for no reason i mean you're just a silly goose i guess or geese in our case and um i definitely liked how they worked the two-player aspect i felt like some places we needed two players like when they stuck us in a box, one of us went in and the other one followed behind where the, where the guy who was going into the into his, what was it, his restaurant couldn't see us. And then we had to hide while the other one escaped. Um, I definitely feel like they didn't make this seem like it was a solo player game that this definitely felt like it could have been two players all along. And I don't know if they changed anything to make that happen or it was just that difficult for people to get through one place to another when you are playing in the single player mode. Um, you wanna talk about some gameplay mechanics that you had fun with? Um, yeah, um, so what I really like the most is that um, when you're going through each uh, level point or each area um, you'll have the main quest which you know op once you complete it opens up the next level but then you'll have a bonus objective and uh, while it is optional um, the bonus objective is like something you may come across while you're playing through or it may appear after you have finished it so I thought it was very clever that like you might discover it before exiting the level or it might pop up uh during uh during while you're playing it or it might pop up uh, after you're finishing the level so little bonus objectives were nice uh 100 percenting it it's kind of not worth it but uh, i thought it was uh, i thought it was very clever they were like hey before you move on we have one more objective and then you might you know complete the whole board for that section and then move on to the next one yeah i thought i i really liked the the mechanics. Uh, my favorite one were where we were 
in two separate areas. Like, I was trying to... I Either you were trying to let me in or I was trying to let you in the little garden area after stealing the book from the guy. And then we had to ring that bell and then change the dresser into something so that we can climb on top. Do you remember that part? Yeah, I do remember that. that like, the beginning? Yeah, I kind of like that part. I like I liked the little small little bits of area that they had. It made it feel like... I made it feel like this town was alive just by having all these little small plots of different stages. And I I, I know I felt bad doing the one where we steal the little boy's glasses. I'm like, no, I don't want to steal the little boy's glasses. It's so mean. Um, So that was like one of my least favorite things to do. And then and then to get him to have his items sold like he had to buy his own toy bag. I was like, damn, I don't feel good about playing this game about being the bad guy. Uh, were there parts where you were playing where you were like, dang, I, I wish I kind of didn't have to do this to to progress the level? Uh, the only part for me was like the restaurant towards the end. It was like the sneaking inside. And then the only reason why that part bothered me is just there was like this bottle you had to get to. And they were like, fill this bottle full. They were like, fill this bottle with water or have it float near a river. And then this like, then it comes, it becomes like a this subjective thing. I was like, okay, which river? Because you have the river at the beginning and then you have one at this level. So if you would break it or if it's not at the correct spot, then you would have to redo that section again. So that's probably the only one. All right. Um, and so this was a very short game. So the review is going to be obviously pretty short as well. Now we're going to do a rating for you guys. What rating would you give the Untitled Geese game for the length, the price? I paid $7.99 and normal price is $34.99. Uh, so what would you rate this game from one to five? Uh, let's see. I would honestly give it a three. It's not a particularly a bad game, but it's not like the best game either. I would say the reason why I would give it a three, well, um, reason being that you have to really pay attention what the notes slash the request are. Because like I said, some of it can be very objective or subjective in the and um, other times uh you can just kind of just get lost like there might be an item that you might not know the name for or the definition for it so there are some objects that will be titled differently and you know you might have to look it up i think there was like one item that i didn't even know that's what it went by because i call it something completely different so a lot of the wording can be very confusing and then there's like some like puzzle elements too where they have to like figure out okay like this thing like physically like like um what do you call it like okay so this attached to this and then this activates this for me to connect to it so like there are some puzzle aspects to it and then there are some parts where like okay i didn't even know that's what they call this in real life so um yeah um i would just give it a three just because some of it can be confusing and then some of it can be like very puzzly and uh and then the completion like criteria for this is just not worth it so that's why would you just give it a three out of five right so um for me i know this game is an indie title and i know it's not going to be that long but i thought i felt like it was too short right uh for the 30 the 34.99 i mean i paid 7.99 for this physical but that's because i waited for a sale and got a coupon blah 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 but uh, I think it was overpriced for for how short the game was. So I'm going to say this is a 2.5. It's right in the middle. Um, I don't think it was worth that much. I think this should have been a $30 game. And I understand there was an indie developer. But this game, a lot of people went crazy for. And I understand the cuteness aspect. And you're being a silly little goose. But uh, I, I think for the cost that it was, it was not enough game for the cost um but that's what i feel um you want to give us your exit ticket uh yeah so um you can find me on youtube at divine cummings voice acting as well as divine cummings voiceover where all my social medias will be in the description of this video and uh thanks for having me review this game nintendo gamer again thanks for uh for coming and playing with me so uh again this is a local co-op game um and i hope you guys enjoyed the review happy gaming guys bye